welcome Dr. Bhargav and Dr. Dua. Thank you very much for joining us here. Um, very big congratulations. 1,000 bone marrow transplants. Wow, that's a huge number. So very big congratulations to you and your team uh, for this stupendous journey. We're looking forward to so much more in times to come. Uh, this bone marrow transplant is uh, a relatively newer term. Um, and while many people have started to understand it, I think there are a lot of unanswered questions around it. Uh, so Dr. Bhargav, tell us a little bit about hematology and bone marrow transplant. Uh, thanks, Dr. Ritu, for this. I think hematologists in this country are 22 years old. Uh, the first batch passed out in 2000 or 1999 or 2001. And it's been a remarkable journey. People are started recognizing hematology as a different branch. So long back from medicine, the medical oncology branched out. And now in past two decades, the hematology is slowly and steadily getting separated out or branching out from medical oncology. And you know why? It's not just to gain that extra mile. It's just to deliver to people. Because the diseases are ever increasing. The research is ever increasing. Innovations are coming at a breakthrough speed. Every day you wake up and you say, I thank God I'm not giving my exam in today's 2022 because I'm surely going to fail because there's so much of a download of information which has taken place. To serve your people in the best and the most proficient manner, you require more specialists. And Dr. Ritu, the idea is go, go, next five years or a decade down the line, you will start seeing specialists just for one disease called leukemia. You will start seeing disease, doctors only for myeloma. That's how the world is changing and so we are and that's why probably now hematology is a well recognized branch which deals with blood and blood disorders blood cancer specifically so we deal with only 15 to 20 diseases i don't do breast cancer i don't do colon cancer i don't even do pediatric problems so dr vikas is there up to 18 we have divided 0 to 18 is dr vikas so 18.1 is me but less than 18 is this is Dr. Vikas, is just to give the best and the most proficient way and applying the current knowledge to our patients so that they get the best. Dr. Dua, pediatric population, um, I think a lot of emotions attached to children. I can only imagine how parents feel when they bring children to you. How has been your journey? How has the pediatric hematology developed over time? So thank you, Dr. Ritu. So uh, it's I would say it's a subspecialty branch. So Dr. Bhargav is talking about hematology, not a part of medical oncology. Nowadays we have trained people who just deal with children who have blood disorders and cancers. So now we have training in pediatric hematology oncology in the country, in which people who are from pediatric background they are trained to deal with patients who have blood disorders and who have cancers, who have solid tumors like brain tumors who have bone tumors, who have kidney kidney cancers. So we, we all understand that pediatric cancers are not very common. As the age goes on, cancer increase, but three to five percent of all cancers happen in pediatric age group. That's why we have people who are trained in pediatrics dealing with pediatric hematology, oncology, and are now doing pediatric bone marrow transplants in the country. You. What are the general signs that people should be aware of or uh, the general physicians in, in different parts of the world who may not be um, as clued on as to what, how to pick up um, at the earliest signs? So what are the early warning signs for uh, people as well as their uh, physicians um, and the primary doctors? So it could be merits of signs. It could be anything uh, right from weight loss, fever, fever which has been persisting for months together, weight loss, any lymph node swellings, bleeding manifestations, bony pains. As we grow older, above 50 years of age, you will realize that if you have a back pain and you have got anemia, that could be the first sign for multiple myeloma. And many people we just miss. We are living up to 75 years of age, so low hemoglobin. So Dr. Ritu, hemoglobin, low hemoglobin actually could be one of the stepping stones to find more diseases. We have been thinking or we have been trained to think that everything which has to do with anemia is nutritional. No guys, anemia could be a sign for colon cancer. Anemia in elderly could be a sign for myelodysplastic syndrome. 
anemia hemoglobin less than 12 or less than 13 in i mean males and less than 12 in females could be a harbinger for cancers so these common signs actually could actually lead to diagnosis of cancers early so bony pains weight loss fever swellings uh, any lymph node swelling over the body these are the signs for to be picked up so that the blood cancer can be diagnosed and believe me the more you diagnose them early the better is the outcome when we started this journey a decade back we were picking 80 to 90 percent cancers in stage four in a decade these numbers have plummeted down. So now we are picking stage one and stage two cancers at least in 40 to 50% of people. And that's thanks to awareness, thanks to knowledge, thanks to economic growth, thanks to many more hospitals like this who are creating awareness on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think it's very well it has to do with awareness about the diseases that it can stuck anybody at any time, irrespective of caste, creed or influential status they have. We need to be aware and we need to start listening to our body. And what about children, Dr. Dua? So uh, how, how do parents, what are the signs that the parents should look for? So if we talk about pediatric cancers, the most common cancer in pediatric age group is blood cancer. And blood cancer is of two types. One is called, these are the technical names, acute lymphoblastic leukemia and acute myeloid leukemia. So there is something wrong in the bone marrow. So your white cells are abnormally proliferating. So if your white cells are abnormally proliferating, your red cells and your platelets goes down. So the function of red cells is to give you energy. Because if you have normal hemoglobin, you, you look well. But if your hemoglobin goes down, you, you feel weak, tired, fatigued. So in a, in a patient who's got blood cancer like ALL, hemoglobin goes down. He may be looking pale. He may be having weakness, fatigue, tiredness. Once your white cells goes up because of the abnormal proliferation in blood cancers, you are at risk of infections. You get fever. And in case your platelet goes down in blood cancer, you are at risk of bleeding. So usually patients who have got blood cancer, they come to us with low hemoglobin or with fever or with bony pains or with bleeding manifestations. Thank you. That's very helpful. So what I'm hearing from both of you is that low hemoglobin is a very important warning sign. And along with that, if you've got fever and something which is persisting, then it's very important to reach out to a specialist and, and have care. How difficult is the diagnosis of these conditions? I mean, is it a long drawn diagnostic tool or is it easy to diagnose? Uh, to be honest, the diagnosis has become very simpler. But people has to understand to reach to the correct diagnosis and to reach to a precision medicine or what you called or a individualized medicine, you need to, to, to diagnose them. You need to investigate them more. You need to know why they have developed and is their disease very peculiar or not? And what are the drugs which will be specifically utilized for you, which is called individualized treatment? So in hematology, very simple blood test, complete blood count, which everybody does. I mean, tons of labs have crop up and you do keep on doing your health checkups every now and then without knowing what is normal and abnormal. Please look at the CBC because that's a gateway for hematological disorders because you pick up with this simplest test. And once you have picked up with those simplest tests, then you go for more advanced tests called bone marrow. And there are plenty of myths that you do a bone marrow test and the disease is going to spread. No, it doesn't spread. You do a, you have got a lymph node, which is a swelling in the neck or in the, in the armpits. You do a biopsy, it grows and it spreads out. No friends, it does not spread out because the biopsy is going to tell you what kind of a cancer. Because you need a treatment and the treatment is specific to a disease name. And disease are rapidly proliferating. I mean, not proliferating, but we are discovering more. That is why the names are growing, ever growing. So now we started with, say, 15 lymphomas. We have got 30 lymphomas now. So every disease has got a different diagnosis, different treatment. So you need to investigate. So friends, bone marrow aspiration biopsy, lymph node biopsy, genetics, very, very important component, Dr. Ritu. My nose is different than Dr. Vikas' nose. And Dr. Vikas' texture is different than me. Why? It's because the genetics determine that. Similarly, the genes within yourself determine how good, bad, or ugly your disease is going to be. And that is why new age technology, which in, entails using genetics and genomics, has to be incorporated in modern treatment. And these are the investigations which we need to do so as to know, like your Janam Patri, we need to know your blood Patri so that we can treat you adequately. 
and these blood cancers are actually they don't have any stage so if you do a genetic workup on these uh, these blast cells these cancer cells then you can prognosticate the family whether your child or your your patient is falling in good bad or ugly category that's so what the technical name is standard risk intermediate risk or high risk and what are the treatment options and cure rates i mean um, how how frequently do we see remission what kind of life can people lead um, after you know being diagnosed and being treated with such kind of cancers so that's where the pediatric scores more than me <laughs> what the last thing is very simple that they live normal life as they are treated they live normal life we have made a huge strides we have made a huge strides you look at 1950s in multiple myeloma probably one year survival now people are surviving 7 to 8 years which entails that you might be seeing the sunrise of 2027 or 2028 which might be much better than what 2023 gives you cml till 1999 2000 was the indication for bone marrow transplants now a simple pill a simple pill can actually make you reach to 65 years of age is a normal expectancy so more and more people are surviving in spite of knowing in spite of the bad diseases in spite of bad genomics bad genetics of the disease still 60% people are surviving which is better than zero so majority of people see at one point of time and say oh only 60% i say we see a journey from zero to 60% in five decades and we say we are moving on to that journey because we are doing every day we are doing right things in innovation we are doing a right thing in technology we are doing a right thing in research so as to make this benchmark go from 60 to 100 look at this anal cancer story which is got just published mmr gene if you have got 12 out of 12 100% hodgkins lymphoma one trial got published out to and that was like 100% the survival was like 100 so That's you see a journey of five decades and then people realize wow the I mean, it's a good time to have cancer. No, I mean, you should not have it. But if I say, oh, you know, in 2022, and I say it's a good time to have cancer because you have treatment, and you are seeing a pipeline because many companies are working onto that, including us are working on innovative ways of finding out and treating them so that we can we can, I mean, we can increase the survival or cure it. So I think it's a beautiful time. Uh, people are surviving longer. People are living with a good quality of life. and of course the bone marrow transplant comes in in adults which brings a full stop to blood cancer but you yeah, know the rightly said by dr bhargav in pediatric age groups the outcomes are much better so if we talk about pediatric leukemias pediatric blood cancers the outcomes are close to 90% so that means if you have a patient in pediatric age group coming to a clinic and let's say you have 100 patients like that so 90 will be well forever just for 10% patients the outcome is might not be very great because they might be refracted to the disease they might not be responding well to the chemotherapy they might be requiring transplant so 90% patients can be just cured with simple chemotherapeutic agents simple medicines by intravenous route or by oral route just 10% would be unlucky i would say i would say unlucky because they might not be responding to the chemotherapy and then they have to go on to the transplant track but still outcomes in 2022 is Are is are really fantastic, close to ninety percent. Thank you. What does future look like? Uh, what are the kind of advancements that we are seeing? And you know, just as you said that over last five decades, uh, you know, we've gone from zero to sixty percent. I'm sure there is a path from sixty to ninety percent, and hopefully hundred percent also. So, what does future look like? And how fast do you think these uh, newer advancements uh, will will be viable for commercialization or a long larger scale deployment? I think future is very bright. I say it's the brightest. I mean, I don't have. I've, I've not seen the future, but today, as we see, it's the brightest thing in in our spark. What we achieved in five decades, probably we will achieve with the technology in five years. We are seeing new technologies. We have never heard. I mean, our Ayurveda did talk about your own body's immunity as a power to prevent cancer, which was T cell, but they didn't name the T cells. and in today's world look at it what we did 5000 years back now the technology has brought in car t cell the people who got car t cell in 2020 2010 that female is still alive in 2022 12 years down the line with the refractory cancer your own t cells manufactured okay brought into the lab changed over added upon things and infused within you so power of reigniting your own t cells to kill the cancer cells is what is car t cell 
and we are progressing rapidly today. We might not have 180 centers in India, but we have got three, four. They are proliferating slowly and steadily, surely with a robust foot, they are proliferating. And CAR T cell entails that we will usher into an era probably which will take it from 60% to 90% or those 40% look at this those 60% who has got cured the rest 40% again 60% of that will be cured by CAR T cells so CAR T cell is rapidly progressing into every spare not only blood cancers not in pediatric cancers but on also in ovarian cancers esophageal cancers so T cells the center theme is reignite your T cells and kill them unleash them to kill the cancer second biggest thing is gene therapy which in pediatrics is has finding is major usage in hemoglobinopathies yeah so uh, right now the only cure for a thalassemic or a patient who's got sickle cell anemia is a bone marrow transplant but there are trials going on throughout the world in which the gene therapy trials are going on and you never know that you the child might be just cured by just manipulating your genes and you might not be requiring bone marrow transplant in future very nice. So I'm. It's heartening to hear that the future is bright. I'm sure you know we are on a journey to get to a hundred percent outcomes. Uh, thank you very much to both of you for all that you do every single day. Um, I think I hear a lot of uh, stories of gratitude and happiness from the patients um, whose lives you've touched. Uh, wishing you many more and thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.